Sandra, what made you want to be an artist? Well, I think I've always made art. Um, it was just something that I was able to get lost in completely. How would you describe the relationship between your installations such as Midair and the smaller two-dimensional works like the universe's spider webs? With the spider web works, which were works that I'd eventually titled Universes and they were actual spider webs captured onto paper, I noticed that they just had this um, quality to them that I thought that I might never be able to actually do myself. The web kind of becomes an indication for a larger web that could be the universe, it could be the cell inside your body or it could be um, a sound bursting out into a space. So it was very evocative to me. What is it about the cosmos that, that interests you? Oh, what isn't about the cosmos that interests It's uh, I think I really enjoy seeing something that may seem like on a cosmic scale but exists um, right here because the universe is here as well as out there. One of the interesting things about the thread installations, having observed them over a number of years, is that they're impossible to view in their entirety at any one time. It's actually quite interesting to see when people have taken photographs of the work and I actually don't know which part of the work it is because it depends where you're standing and because it's so transparent as well. The curves in them are everywhere all at once and so when you photograph that it flattens out, which is quite interesting as well because it sort of returns it to a drawing again. Yeah, it's something very much that's very different to experience rather than to see in an image. Could you talk about the relationship between your visual art and music practices? Involving the music itself into the work is more, I guess, I mean, I've used sound literally in, in installations, but I think I'm always looking for the qualities of sound uh, in my visual work, in a way. Um, there might be a sort of flow in the space or a rhythm in the space that I'm trying to articulate or feel. And that very, feels very musical to me. Could you talk about your interest in science? I think my interest in science is, is kind of very much based on the images that I find in outdated science texts. These are very low resolution uh, images of, of the cosmos. The thing I like about those outdated images is that they were hiding a lot as well. And often the texts that went along with these images were you know, science texts, so very factual. But I would see something else in the image. So I started actually cutting out the, some of the text that I didn't think was necessary <laughs> under the image and I would make poems out of text pieces. I, I've called them cut poems. I'd actually had thought of doing a pendulum type work for a while now, so I put a string up onto the ceiling and hung a weight at the bottom of it and pushed it to see what would happen. So I tried sand and it didn't actually flow properly and it was a, was a problem. So then I uh, thought about salt and um, it, it created this... Uh, this pattern every time I did it so I could um, um, make this drawing and then um, sweep it up and hose it away and do another one and see and see what happened. So it um, formed these sort of bright white drawings that almost um, kind of look like uh, galaxies again or um, also uh, solar systems and but it's uh, like a universal pattern of movement because it always goes from the outside into a loop towards the centre. So that's the same universal movement um, that happens every time, which I'm really interested in. You were talking about the thread installations being impermanent, that you have to de-install them. Is that something that's consciously a consideration for you or is it just a byproduct or a, a result of... of the type of work that you make? Yeah, it, it becomes part of the work being there is also the work not being there. So whether the work 
ends up completely dissolving. <laughs> um, and the empty space is left with its own sounds. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, but that's an interesting um, thing to think about, I think, just as a concept as well. How much has to be there in order for there to be something? Or what that might look like. Yeah, or sound like. Or sound like. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Hamish. <laughs>